This presentation shows how to model Earth moving using characterized resources. We shall use as an example Earth moving operations that use two types of loaders and two types of haulers. This example has been adapted from figure 10.12 in the book by Dan Halpin and Ron Woodhead, Design of Construction and Process Operations. The cyclone model for these earth moving operations is included in this handout, but will not be described. It is incorrect and needs to be corrected as explained on this page and on the next page that follows. Instead, we will concentrate on the stroboscope model for earth moving using characterized resources. This network is shown in this figure. In the stroboscope model, we shall assume that the following resources are available. Three 20-ton haulers, five 15-ton haulers, one 5-ton loader, and two 3-ton loaders. In this model, haulers can only carry soil equal to their capacity. Multiple draws must be used to draw the exact amount of soil that a hauler can hold, that is, either 15 tons or 20 tons. For example, seven draws are needed to load a 20-ton hauler using 3-ton loaders, but only 20 tons of soil must be removed from the soil queue, not 21 tons. In the case where two loaders load the same hauler at the same time, assume for simplicity that the duration of the load activity equals the sum of the draw durations divided by the number of loaders working together. The durations of the various activities depend on the resources involved and is shown in the figure. We shall compare production in cubic yards per hour for two operating rules. In rule A, haulers are loaded in FIFO order, first in, first out. At the beginning of simulation, the three 20-ton haulers are in the front of the queue and are loaded first. The discipline for the loader queue puts the 5-ton loader at the front of the queue. Operating rule A is as follows. When loading a 20-ton hauler, use two 3-ton loaders if available. Otherwise, use one 5-ton loader. Otherwise, use one 3-ton loader. When loading a 15-ton hauler, use one 3-ton loader if available. Otherwise, use one 5-ton loader. Under operating rule B, Haulers are not loaded in FIFO order. Instead, 20-ton haulers are given higher priority, so they load first. Also, the discipline for the loader queue should put the 5-ton loader at the front of the queue. Operating rule B requires that when loading a 20-ton hauler, we should use one 5-ton loader. Otherwise, use one 3-ton loader. When loading a 15-ton hauler, use one 3-ton loader if available. Otherwise, use one 5-ton loader. The stroboscope network is shown in the figure. Notice that there is only one loader queue, called LQ, and only one hauler queue, called HQ. Also, there is only one load activity, one haul activity, one dump activity, and one return activity. The amount of soil to move from the queue soil to move is 15,000 cubic yards. The durations of activities are written underneath their nodes. These durations are different depending on the equipment used. The time to load one scoop into a hauler depends on whether loader is a big loader or a small loader. The distributions are both pert. The time to haul and the time to return depend on whether the hauler is a big hauler or a small hauler.
The time to dump is the same, one minute. Shown below the network are the statements required to implement operating rule A. This model uses save values. The two key save values are called big hauler can get two small loaders and small hauler can get small loader. These two save values are initialized to the value zero, which stands for false. They will be changed to true or false as needed during simulation. These two save values control the draw until and the draw where for link LD1. The way these save values control link LD1 is illustrated on the next page. This page illustrates how the save value big hauler can get to small loader and the save value small hauler can get small loader control the draw until and the draw where for link LD1 to implement operating policy A. To see how this is done, consider the start of the simulation when sim time equals zero. Combi load has just created its first instance. QHQ has eight haulers, three big haulers in the front of the queue and five small haulers in the back of the queue. QLQ has three loaders, one big loader in the front of the queue and two small loaders in the back of the queue. The discipline for QLQ has the expression minus size, which places the big loader at the front of the queue. Link HL1 draws one big hauler from hauler queue and transfers it to the starting instance of load. When link HL1 draws one big hauler, it also assigns values to the two save values. The save value big hauler can get two small loader is set equal to one, which stands for true, by evaluating its expression. This expression has two parts connected with the logical end statement. The left-hand side of the expression compares the size of the hauler that is currently inside link HL1 to the size of the subtype big hauler. Since the hauler flowing through link HL1 is a big hauler, its size has the value 20. This is the 20 on the left-hand side of the equal equal sign. On the right-hand side is the size of the subtype big hauler, which is also 20. So this expression 20 equal equal 20 returns true. In other words, it returns the value 1. The right-hand side of the expression checks to see if the count of the small loaders in the loader queue is greater than or equal to 2. The count of the small loaders in the loader queue is currently 2. So 2 is indeed greater than or equal to 2. If that is so, the value returned is 1, which is true. So both the left and the right hand side of the logical end statement have the value 1. In other words, true, so the value that is returned is 1. In other words, true. So the save value, big hauler can get to small loader, is assigned the value 1, which is true. Link HL1 also assigns a value to the save value, small hauler can get small loader. That value is 0, which stands for false. The reason for this is because the expression for this save value also has two parts connected with a logical end statement. The left-hand side 
compares the size of the hauler currently flowing through link HL1 to the size of a small hauler. In this case, it compares 20, which is the size of the big hauler inside link HL1, to 15, which is the size of the subtype small hauler. This equality check returns the value false. In other words, it returns a zero. Because this is a logical end statement, and the left-hand side of the logical end is false, Stroboscope stops the evaluation here and returns the value zero for false. The right-hand side is irrelevant. The draw until statement allows link LD1 to draw two times so that big hauler in load will be matched with two small loaders. The draw until statement allows link LD1 to draw until the number of draws are greater than or equal to the current value of the save value big hauler can get two small loaders plus one. The value of the save value is one. One plus one gives us two. So this allows link LD1 to draw two times. The expression for the draw where statement allows link LD1 to cursor the resources in the queue LQ and to draw two small loaders. The expression for the draw where statement of link LD1 is a conditional statement. The if part of this conditional statement is a logical OR that takes as arguments the values of the two save values. Big hauler can get two small loaders. Small hauler can get small loader. The first of these save values is true, and the second is false. But because this is a logical OR statement, the result is true. If this IF statement is true, which in this case it is, it returns the result of comparing the size of the loader being cursored to the size of a small loader. Otherwise, if the if statement is false, it returns the value 1, which stands for true. In plain language, the expression for the drawware says that if a big hauler can get two small loaders, then allow the link to draw only those loaders whose size equals the size of a small loader. This will allow the big hauler to be loaded by two small loaders as required by policy A. The figure shows the characterized queue LQ as a table. This table has three columns, three properties. The three properties are rest num, time in, and size. The 5-ton loader is in the front of the queue. The two 3-ton loaders are in the back of the queue. The drawing process through link LD1 is performed as follows. Link LD1 has a cursor, which is like an arrow or a pointer, that the link points to the first resource in the queue, in this case, Resource number 1, which has, which has a size of 5. Link LD1 then evaluates the expression for draw where. If the expression returns a true value, then link LD1 will draw this resource, the big loader. If the expression is false, then this loader will not be drawn and link LD1 will cursor the next loader in queue and repeat the process. In this case, when link LD1 cursors the first resource with resnum1, the logical expression of draw where has the following value. The if statement that uses the two save values as arguments returns the value true because the left save value is true and the right one is false. 
the result if the if statement is true is to compare the size of the currently cursored loader, which is 5, to the size of a small loader, which is 3. The result of that comparison is 0, which is false. So the conditional statement being evaluated is true, question mark, result if true, result if false. In this case, the result if true is 0, so link LD1 will not draw the first loader. At this point, link LD1 will reevaluate the draw until condition, which compares the number of draws through link LD1 to the value 2. The current value of the number of draws is 0, which is definitely not greater or equal to 2. So link LD1 will cursor the next resource in Q, that is resource number 2. Link LD1 will reevaluate the drawware logical expression, which in this case is exactly the same as the logical expression for the first loader, except for the fact that the size of the currently cursored loader is 3 and not 5. As a result, when 3 is compared to 3, that is, when the size of the currently cursored loader is compared to the size of a small loader, the result is true. So the overall result of the if statement is true, that is, the number 1. And as a result, link LD1 will draw this loader. After link LD1 draws the second loader in line, then it reevaluates the draw until statement. The draw until statement compares the number of draws, which is 1, and checks to see if it is greater than or equal to 2. This is false, so link LD1 has to attempt to draw again. It moves on to the third resource in Q, which is the second small loader. Notice that at this point, there are only two loaders in Q, the first and the third, in terms of resource numbers. The drawware logical expression for the small loader with resource number 3 is exactly the same as that for the small loader with resource number 2. And the result is again 1, which allows link LD1 to draw the second small loader. After that, the draw until is checked, in which case the number of draws now is 2, which is greater than or equal to 2, and the drawing process is complete. At the end of this drawing process, the new instance of load contains one big hauler and two small loaders. The drawing process continues with link SL1 and drawing soil. Before we describe the process of drawing soil through link SL1, let us investigate other situations that might occur at a different same time to see what happens under other conditions. In this example, CombiLoad has just created a new instance. QHQ has one big hauler at the front with possibly other haulers behind it. And QLQ has two loaders, one big loader in the front and one small loader in the back of the queue. Link HL1 then draws one big hauler from the hauler queue and transfers it to the starting instance of load. When link HL1 draws the big hauler, it also sets the values for the two save values. The save value big hauler can get two small loaders is set to the value 0, which stands for false. This is because in the logical end statement, the left-hand side is true, because the size of the caller currently inside link HL1 is indeed 20, which equals the size of the subtype big hauler, but the right-hand side of the logical end statement is false. The reason for that is because the count of small loaders in the loader queue is 1, which is not greater than or equal to 2, and as a result, the logical if statement returns the value false. 
That's the logical end statement has a left hand side which is true and the right hand side which is false and returns the value false. The save value small hauler can get small loader is also false. The reason for this is because the left hand side of the logical end statement compares the size of the hauler inside link HL1 which is 20 to the size of a small hauler which is 15. That logical comparison of equality returns the value 0, i.e. false, and the entire expression stops evaluation and returns the value false. In this case, draw until allows link LT1 to draw one time so that the big hauler in load will be matched with one loader. The table below illustrates how drawware allows link LD1 to draw one big loader. At first, link LD1 cursors the first loader in the queue, which has the rest num1. This loader has size equal to 5. The conditional if statement for the drawware logical expression is an OR that has false values as argument. Because the result is false, link LD1 will draw the first loader in line, which is the big loader, 5 ton loader. Link LD1 then evaluates the draw until expression, which states that because the number of draws are greater than or equal to 1, the drawing process ends. The end result of the drawing process through link LD1 is that the current instance of load contains one big hauler and one big loader. The conclusion of this discussion is that if the activity load has drawn a big hauler and QLQ does not have two small loaders, then both save values Big hauler can get two small loaders, and small hauler can get small loader are false. As a result, the drawware will always return the value 1, which is true, and this would allow link LD1 to draw the first loader in the front of QLQ. This is true irrespective of the loader size at the front of the queue. This works as intended because the discipline of LQ places the 5-ton loader, the big loader, at the front of the queue LQ. So, if a big loader is available, it will automatically be at the front of the queue LQ, and that will be the one drawn to match the big hauler. In the third case, combi load has just created a new instance. QHQ has one small hauler at the front, with possibly other haulers behind it. And QLQ has three loaders, one big loader in the front and two small loaders in the back. This is because the discipline of the loader queue places the big loader at the front of the queue. Then link HL1 draws one small holder from HQ and transfers it to the starting instance of load. While this drawing process through link HL1 occurs, the values of the two save values are also assigned. It's the save value big holder can get two small loader as is assigned the value 0, i.e. false, because the left-hand side of its logical end statement compares the size of the hauler currently inside link HL1, which is 15, to the size of the big hauler subtype, which is 20, and finds out that these two sizes are not equal. As a result, this equality comparison returns the value false, and the entire logical end expression is false. The save value small hauler can get small loader is assigned the value true.
This is because the left-hand side of its logical end statement compares the size of the holer inside link HL1, which is 15, to the size of the subtype small holer, which is also 15. So this left-hand side is true. The right-hand side considers the count of the small loaders in LQ, which is 2. There are two small loaders in LQ right now. Because 2 is a number greater than or equal to 1, it stands for true. And as a result, it returns the value 1, which is also true. So the logical end statement has true values on both sides, and returns the value 1, which stands for true. In this case, the draw until expression allows link LD1 to draw one time, so that the small holder in load will be matched with one loader. This is because the save value big holder can get two small loaders has the value 0. So the right hand side of the expression for the draw until has the value 1. The drawing process proceeds as follows. Link LD1 cursors the first loader in Q, which in this case has the rest num 1. This is the big loader that has a size 5. The if part of the drawware logical expression has the value false or true, which returns the value true. As a result, the evaluation continues by comparing the size of the loader being cursored to the size of a small loader. That compares the value 5 to the value 3, and because they are not equal, the result is false. Thus, link LD1 will not draw this big loader. Because the draw until is not satisfied, link LD1 will then cursor the next loader in Q that has rest num equal to 2. The logical expression for the draw where is exactly the same as before, except that the size of the loader being cursored is 3. Because the size of the loader cursored by LD1 equals the size of a small loader, the result is indeed true. Thus, the result of the drawware is true, and link LD1 will draw the first small loader in the queue, that is, the small loader with rest num equal to 2. Link LD1 will then evaluate its draw until expression, which compares the number of draws, which is 1, to see if it is greater than or equal to 1. Since this expression is satisfied, the drawing process is complete. At the end of this drawing process, the new instance of activity load has one small hauler and one small loader. We can conclude that if load has drawn a small hauler and QLQ has one big loader and two small loaders, then the save value big hauler can get two small loaders is false, but the save value small hauler can get small loader is true. As a result, drawware does not allow link LD1 to draw the big loader at the front of the queue, but allows LD1 to draw the first small loader. This is indeed the intended policy. Notice that the same will occur if there is one big loader and one small loader in the queue. In the fourth case, combi load has just created a new instance. Q hauler Q has one small hauler at the front with possibly other haulers behind it, and Q loader Q has one loader, that is, one big loader. Link HL1 then draws one small holder from HQ and transfers it to the starting instance of load. In this case, on draw through link HL1, we assign the value false to both save values. The save value 
big holder can get too small louder is false because the left hand side of its logical end statement is false. The size of the holder inside link HL1 is 15, so it is not equal to the size of the subtype big holder, which is 20. The value of the save value small holder can get small loader is also false because the right hand side of its logical end statement is false. In this case, the count of small loaders in LQ is zero. There aren't any. As a result, the value returned by the if statement is that for the condition false, which is zero in this case, and the entire expression returns the value false. The draw until statement allows link LD1 to draw one time so that small holder in load will be matched with one loader. It so happens that this one loader in this case will be a big loader. The drawing process through link LD1 begins by cursoring the first resource in the QLQ. This resource has the resnum1 and it is a big loader of size 5. The logical expression for the draw where statement has an if part which is false because it is the result of an OR between a false value and a false value. The result of this OR is false. And as a result, the value that the IF statement returns is the value 1, which allows a link LD1 to draw the first loader in Q, which happens to be the big loader. In conclusion, if load has drawn a small holder, and QLQ does not have any small loaders, then both save values are false. As a result, a drawware allows LD1 to draw the first loader in the front of LQ, irrespective of the loader size. This is again as intended. It is also the only case where a small hauler is matched with a big loader because there is no other loader available. To summarize, when a new instance of activity load is created, activity load first draws a holder from QHQ through link HL1, then draws the matching loader or loaders from QLQ, and then draws soil through link SL1 from the Q soil to move. We shall now investigate the drawing process through link SL1. It is important to remember that when drawing through link SL1 begins, the new instance of activity load already contains a hauler and one or more loaders. The draw until expression for link SL1 allows drawing to continue until the count of soil in load is greater than or equal to the size of the hauler. In Thus, drawing soil will continue until the total amount of soil drawn is greater than or equal to the hauler's size. The draw amount for link SL1 makes sure that the amount of soil drawn is the minimum between the size of the loader and the empty space in hauler. This ensures that the hauler will not be overfilled. The expression for the draw amount for link SL1 takes advantage of the minimum function with two arguments. The first argument is the minval of the size of the loader in load. In this case, it is not sufficient to simply have the variable load.loader.size because there is the possibility that there are two loaders in the instance of load, in which case we have to use a set operator that can operate on more than one loader. In this case, it does not matter whether we use minval, maxval, or abeval. This is because in the case where there are two loaders, their sizes would be equal. The second argument to the min function is the size of the hauler in load minus the count of the soil in load. 
This represents the amount of empty space in the holder. As a result, the draw amount through link SL1 will be the minimum between the loader size and the empty space in the holder. The draw duration through link SL1 simply samples from the PERT distribution. What is interesting about the arguments of the PERT distribution is that they take advantage of the properties of the loader and load, which are LA, LM, and LB. In addition, each property of the loader and load, such as LA, has to be followed by dot minval to take into account the possibility that there are two loaders in load. Again, in this case, we do not have to use dot minval. We could use dot maxval or dot aveval. The last statement defines the duration of activity load to equal the spot time property of the hauler in load plus the sum of the draw durations through link SL1 divided by the count of the loader in load. This is to take into account the possibility that two loaders are loading the same hauler at the same time. The next page shows the stroboscope statement for this model. Most of these statements have already been described. However, it is worth examining the definition of resource types for this model. The first car type, hauler, has several properties, including size, spot time, HA, HM, and HB, which are the three parameters for the PERT distribution for the whole activity, RA, RM, and RB, which are the three parameters for the PERT distribution for the return activity. As mentioned earlier, the subtypes of hauler are big hauler and small hauler that have sizes 20 and 15. Also defined is a safe prop for the type hauler called soil loaded. This safe prop will contain the amount of soil actually loaded into that hauler. The car type loader also has several properties, including size, LA, LM, and LB. LA, LM, and LB are the three parameters for the PERT distribution for the time it takes to put one bucket inside a hauler. The statements that implement policy A are shown here. All these statements have already been described. The exception is the assign statement that occurs on start of activity load. When activity load starts, we assign the count of the soil in load to the safe prop soil loaded of the hauler in load. This save prop is used later on in the release amount for link SL4, which releases the soil loaded of the hauler in dump. This shows the stroboscope output from the model using policy A. The output begins by describing the model itself and the assumptions that it makes. It repeats the input with respect to the number of resources being used, and it repeats the policy by which haulers are matched with loaders. The output of the model shows the production in cubic yards per hour. This is followed by the standard stroboscope report that shows statistics for queues and activity. This page shows the statistics for the various characterized types defined for the model. This page describes the exact same model operating under rule A, but this time using variables instead of using save values. The model using save values is easier to understand and it's easier to implement. The model using variables is a little more involved. This model controls the draw until and the draw wear of link LD1 through three variables. The first one is total small loaders available. The second one is 
big hauler can get two small loaders, and the third one is small hauler can get small loader. The last two variables have names that are very similar to the save values used by the previous model. The first variable, total small loaders available, is needed because in order to determine how many small loaders are available, we have to add the small loaders in two places. The first part is the count of the small loaders in the loader queue. The second part is the count of the small loaders in the load instance. This is required because if a big hauler will be loaded with two small loaders, the drawing process will first take the first small loader from the loader queue and pass it on to the instance of activity load. At that point, the variable big hauler can get two small loaders must still return the value true, and for that to happen, it is necessary to compare the variable total small loaders available against the value true and the variable total small loaders available has to take into account the small loaders in the loader queue as well as the small loader in the load instance. Notice that for the variable big hauler can get two small loaders to be true, two conditions are necessary. The first is that the count of big haulers in the instance of load must be true, that is one, and the second part is that the total small loaders available must be greater than or equal to 2. Similarly, for the variable small hauler can get small loader, two conditions must be satisfied. The first condition is that the count of the small haulers in loader must be true. In other words, load must contain a small hauler. The second condition is that the count of the small loaders in LQ must be true. In other words, the QLQ must contain a small loader. The draw until statement for link LD1 will stop the drawing process after one loader has been drawn when big hauler can get two small loaders is false. The only exception is when a big hauler can get two small loaders, in which case the variable big hauler can get two small loaders is true, so the right hand side of the expression for the draw until is the number 2 instead of the number 1. The logical expression for the draw where for link LD1 works as follows. If a big hauler can get two small loaders, or a small hauler can get one small loader, then link LD1 should allow only small loaders to pass through. That is, it should compare the size of the loader currently being cursored against the size of the subtype of the small loader. Otherwise, LD1 should draw the first loader in Q. This is accomplished by having the value 1 in the expression, which is always true. This of course works because the QLQ discipline puts the big loaders, if any, in the front of the queue. The statements for controlling the draw process through link SL1 are exactly the same as the previous model that uses save value. The draw until expression allows link SL1 to keep loading soil until the total amount of soil drawn is greater than or equal to the size of the hauler. The draw amount for link SL1 makes sure that the amount of soil drawn is the minimum between the loader size and the empty space in the hauler. This way the hauler will not be overfilled. The draw duration for link SL1 samples from the PERT distribution the time to load one scoop, which depends on the loader's bucket size as determined by its properties. Finally, the duration of activity load is the spot time of the hauler in load plus the sum of the draw durations through link SL1 divided by the number of loaders currently in load. The output of the model for rule A that uses variables instead of save values is identical to that using save values. 
and the production result is again 828 cubic yards per hour.